How's it going guys, it's Josh here, welcome back to another video. So today I've got something a little bit special to show you. Now Drivo contacted me a little while back asking me if I wanted to check out their brand new Joyuse, hopefully I said that correctly, 96 keyboard. Now this is still a prototype so we might see a few minor changes on the finished product, but I wanted to give you guys a little showcase of what you can expect. As you can tell, it looks absolutely stunning. It is the world's thinnest aluminium mechanical keyboard. It almost looks similar to something you'd expect to see from Apple with its all aluminium body. I always think aluminium is probably one of the best looking materials. It just looks and feels so premium, much more so than plastic, which is what the majority of mechanical keyboards in the market are made of, even the very expensive ones from the big manufacturers. Now, if it's not already obvious, this keyboard has been made with portability in mind. It comes in at a very sleek thickness of only 21mm and a size of 343 by 124 mm Not only that, it weighs less than 500 grams, so it just feels really light and would perfectly travel alongside you in something like a laptop bag. You may have noticed that it's a lot shorter than standard keyboards while managing to still keep 96 keys. That means you've still got the numpad, which a lot of people use, especially while doing office or work-related tasks. I do wish they hadn't left this gap where the escape key sits, for two reasons really. One, because it sort of breaks up the all key appearance, and mostly because it exposes this screw right here. It kind of takes away from such a clean design, it wouldn't be so bad if they'd moved it. So this keyboard actually has Bluetooth, so it can be used wireless. The good news is it can be used wired too, but if you do fancy using it wireless, it contains a 1000mAh battery to keep you going, which you can charge via the port on the back. Now as this is the prototype, the port here is micro USB, but the final version will be a USB-C port, so it's nice to see them keeping up with the modern connectors. The battery should last fine for normal usage, it's rated at 50 hours, which is plenty, although if you have all those LEDs on, you're looking at more like 6-8 to eight hours. There's a switch on the back to physically turn on the keyboard. To activate the Bluetooth mode, hit the FN and the Tab key. Basically, this switches between wired mode and Bluetooth mode. Once you've done that, just hold FN and the B key marked with this logo until it starts flashing. Once it does, you can select it from your list of Bluetooth devices from your phone or tablet, and then you're connected. Surprisingly, they decided to use Bluetooth version 3.0 as opposed to the newer 4.0. I'm not really sure what their reasons were for doing this, although I didn't experience any problems with lag or anything like that, so it's not really a major issue. So the switches on this keyboard are a custom switch from Drivo, but they look to be based on the Kali switch design. The final keyboard will be available with several different switch types, although the ones on this keyboard right here are blues. I really love these switches, they provide a very nice typing experience and sound great. Here's a type test. They're a very low profile switch with a 3mm travel distance and come with some nice quality double shot low profile keycaps to match. They're not standard stems mind so they're not easily replaceable, although I really like them anyway. They're translucent on the edges too to allow the LEDs to shine through nicely. Talking of the LEDs, the backlighting on this keyboard is white. It's a very pure white and goes very nicely with the all aluminium design. It also has side lighting, something I wish a lot more keyboards had. The side lighting is actually RGB, you can customise the colour with FN plus the forward slash key, there's 7 to choose from altogether, or you can have it automatically cycle through the colour spectrum. Even with the main backlighting off, it still looks awesome. Now while we don't get to change the colour of the main backlighting, there are a huge selection of effects to choose from. I'm going to show you them all now, so sit back and enjoy the light show. It's an incredibly varied selection, so you should definitely find one you like. You can even change the speed of the effects with the left and right arrow keys, and the brightness with the up and down arrow keys. So, in conclusion, no, it's not a gaming keyboard, it definitely seems more suited to office or travel based on the very clean and minimalist design, not to mention the small form factor. It just looks absolutely stunning, everything from the aluminium body down to the carefully polished inside edges. 
I love the lighting, I would quite like to see an RGB version in the future, so we'll have to wait and see, but if you're after a very slim, very nice looking keyboard, definitely check it out. It's supposed to be released for sale to the public on December the 25th, the price is $69, or around £50, which actually sounds about right for something that looks and feels this premium. I'll drop the links to the keyboard on Drevo's website, and if I can get hold of the final version when it's released, I'll probably do a full review on it then. I just wanted to get this video out today so you guys could check it out, because I thought it looked really cool. Thanks for watching today guys, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you all in the next one.